Hello everyone, welcome back to Mind Pump. In this episode, we talk about the biggest mistake that most people make when they're trying to bring up a lagging body part. In the second half of the show, the guys coach four live callers on questions such as, I have a hectic schedule, I don't have a lot of time, what's the best way for me to train? Another question was, I want to compete in a strongman competition, what's the best way for me to prepare? And finally, another question about, how can I stand out as a personal trainer and take my career to the next level? All right, enjoy the show. Here's a super common mistake people make when trying to bring up a lagging body part. They add volume to that body part, but they don't take that volume away from other body parts. In other words, they end up overtraining trying to bring up a lagging body part. Mm, we this, talked about this with a recent caller, yeah? We did. This is mm -hmm. a common mistake is that where somebody, you know, because you have like studies will show that a certain amount of volume will provide the best results per body part, volume being like, total sets, reps, weight that you'd work for that body part. And then there's a total amount of volume that your body can handle just overall, right? And if you exceed that, then you're going to get diminishing returns. And a big mistake people make is they say, oh, I want to bring up my glutes. So let me just add 10 sets to that. But they don't take those 10 sets from other body parts. They just throw it on top of their already, you know, hard workout. And they end up overtraining their bodies because they're just adding too much total volume. Instead, what you need to do is take that volume away from maybe body parts that are strong, areas that you don't necessarily need to focus on, so that way you can apply that to the lagging body part. And then all of a sudden you'll see results. It's that old fallacy that uh, more work will equal more results. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I did this. I think I-, I yeah, You think you're not doing enough, but but really in a sense too, it's, it's the overall. So you have to make sure you count for everything else. Yeah, I did this with, when I increased the frequency of training uh, my total body. I know you said you did the same thing, Adam, where it's like, Oh, look, studies are showing hitting a body part two or three days a week is ideal or better than one day a week. So I didn't, I didn't cut my volume into three. I just tripled my volume. So I did <laughs> 20 sets for body part, you know, three days a week. And then I was like, why isn't this working? Why is my body not responding? You have to account for all that. And, and this is just one of them. And we think because it's applied to a different body part that it doesn't affect the whole body, but it does. There's like body part specific volume and then there's total body volume and there's a limit to both. Yeah. And do you think too, that it depends on what muscle yeah. you're talking mm -hmm. about too, yeah, right? Cause obviously if you're trying to develop, let's say the back, the legs, the chest, a bigger muscle yeah. uh, versus like a uh, tricep and bicep. Sometimes I feel like I can just increase a little bit more volume or frequency with my buys and tries and not really change anything else and see a difference versus oh, I want to build my back yeah. or my legs. I had to be very careful on how much more volume I add to those things because of how much overall damage they do to the entire body. I'd, I would say mm -hmm. it's probably, because uh, yes, that's true, 100%, I agree with you, but I also think it's probably a better rule of thumb instead of looking at body parts to look at exercises. So some exercises cause more challenges or, or damage, if you will, to the body. For example, quads are a big muscle group, okay? Adding extra sets of squats is going to have way different impact than adding extensions. like some leg extensions, yeah, right? Yeah. Biceps sense. are a small body part, but let's say somebody listened to our episode where we talked about doing supinated grip, you know, curl cool. grip pull-ups for the biceps. That would add a way more damage to the body than like just like concentration curls or something like that. So I think you got to look at the total exercises. And, and, and that's, I'm glad you brought that up, Adam, because if you take volume away from other body parts, but it's like, okay, I'm not going to do cable flies. I'm not going to do rear flies. I'm not, you know, all these little exercises. And then I'm going to throw extra deadlifts in and extra squats in. Yeah. Well, that's not really a, an, that's not really an equivalent trade. You want to take volume from other body parts and apply it to the lagging body parts, but the, but the exercises need to be pretty close and similar. Otherwise, you know, a few sets of curls traded for squats, it's not really a, an equal trade. You might get, you, you know, same total sets, but deadlifts or, you know, I was going to hammer your body way more than curls. For yeah. Example. I wonder who's, you know, most guilty for this. I just see like so much emphasis on butt training as of late yeah. over the last few years. And just like, I, I never see, uh, scaling the rest of the workouts. It's just like an, an overabundance of adding, you know, more glute exercise, you know, based exercises to just like add on top of everything else that's going on. Yeah. But I see mostly when they do that, it's there, there are a lot of isolation stuff. Yeah. Kickbacks, that's donkey pee, like weak shit like stuff. That. Yeah. All yeah. that stuff. That's not really making a big difference yeah. volume or, or trying to make every exercise like every lower body exercise a glute exercise yeah yeah so now i'm gonna put you know i'm gonna do bands around my legs so i can do abduction while doing a squat or while doing a stiff-legged deadlift or while doing 
um, which there's correctional exercise components to that, but um, but yeah, it's not necessarily going to build your butt more, for example. But this whole like volume trading, nobody does it. I don't. Um, most people, I'd say, probably eighty to ninety percent of people who try to bring up a lagging body part do not subtract volume from other areas to add it to lagging body part. They just add volume. Also recognize there's a massive individual variance. Some people can handle a little bit more volume. Some people are going to be very sensitive to that. You know, it reminds me of, and I feel like we should address the conversation that happened in the forum in regards to the Q and a or the uh, live caller we had with a live caller that uh, uh, lady who said that the maps anabolic uh, wasn't uh, helping her legs grow. And then that triggered somebody in the forum to be like, see, I wish the guys would listen when, when women say that there's not enough leg volume in maps anabolic. And you know, my response to that was, okay, well, you know, we've had a handful of women that have made that comment. Then we've also had, you know, 30, 40,000 women say that it was, is perfect. That's why we have mods. That's why we tell people to run the program one time through exactly, and then adjust it and modify it to your body. We wouldn't go back and rewrite the entire program because a handful of people said it wasn't enough volume for them, you know? Yeah, yeah. the individualized aspect of workouts is so important. Um, I, I, you know, to be honest with you, I, I don't know if I'd want to put a workout out without a corresponding podcast so we could explain to people how. Oh, I know. How can you explain all the nuances and the details of like how to navigate through all yeah, this? Yeah, but I, but I caution people because if you don't have tons of experience uh, training your body and being objective or training other people, then follow programming as it's laid out. So long as it's good programming written by good people, I think we all know what we're doing here. So follow it one or two times through, then make adjustments because oftentimes your initial thought or how you want to modify it is wrong because mm -hmm. you don't necessarily know how to program workouts and what works and what doesn't work. But that being said, there's always an individual variance. You know, people respond quite differently. You know, they have, some people have body parts that respond well and others not so well. And, you know, there's different contexts and age and hormone levels and all that stuff. So, although I would say that that is the exception to the rule, because for the most part, when I have somebody like that, and then I do a deep dive in their nutrition, their rest, yeah. all the other variables that go into play when it comes to seeing results, their technique, their biomechanics, right. like I start to address all that. And it's like, oh, okay, it's not the programming, you know? this wasn't working right, or you weren't doing this correctly, or you weren't feeding your body correctly, or you were overstressing your body. And so many times it's not that. Now, there is the occasion to your yeah. point that, you know, somebody is very, very sensitive to volume and they just need barely any, or there's people that need a lot more to, to stimulate and to grow. But I think for the most part, if, it, if it's solid programming and there's just no growth or no response happening, more likely than not, it's actually something else that's going on that we haven't addressed. Yeah, and the problem is with individualizing your workouts when you're not like super experienced is that you don't know what you don't know. So you're basing your decisions oftentimes with your workouts based off of things that may not be important to consider, like how sore you got or um, how tired you were, or how sweaty the workout made you, or looking at the workout and being like, I feel like my arms got a harder workout than my legs. Like, I feel like, right? You hear this quite a bit. Like, this, it feels this particular way, mm -hmm. which often is wrong. I, you know, it took me a long time. I still struggle with this, by the way. The whole, like, it feels a particular way. Like, I, I tend to overtrain even now. I mean, I'm doing, I've been doing this for 30 years on myself, over 20 years for other people. I still will oftentimes overtrain because of the feel part. Like, oh, I feel like I could do more. Yeah. I feel like I should, you know, f feel more fatigued or whatever. And I end up slowly inching towards doing more and more and more only until the, the signals get so loud that I'm like, okay, I got to take some time off. And then, oh, look, it's working again. Oops. You know, this is so for somebody to have that experience, I can only imagine what they're going to end up doing. And if you allow people with minimal experience to if, like, if I let my clients who've worked out for a year, modify their workouts. Oh my God, the workouts would have looked, they would have looked ridiculous. I would have been like, why are, why are, why are you doing all these, these bicep exercises or why are you, you know, Oh, I don't get sore in my shoulders. That's why I'm doing 15 sets for shoulders and two sets for everything else. Well, like, the okay. comments in the forum came yeah. from two trainers. And so they, I think that was it, just it is that they believe that they know better. Sure. And so, which is fine. That's, yeah. that's when you start to modify. Yeah, um, no, that's, that was also part of my point. It's like, yeah. listen, if you know, it's not, then add, add the volume. If you know what you're doing and you're a trainer and you feel like you, you know better. Mm -hmm. 
then then add the volume although <laughs> i would say that's the, not normally the case normally it's something it's something else you know yeah but to think that uh, anabolic does not have a lot of leg volume is crazy to me every Whoa. workout starts off with a lower body movement whether it's a deadlift or a squat and a big variation. one and i <laughs> feel like too it was a good introduction to those compound lifts that i feel like a lot of people avoid and they yeah. just go right to the leg extension and the kickbacks yeah. and all that kind of stuff and so you know, to really get them to focus on creating that loud signal and like loading substantial weight. Yeah. That was always a difficult step uh, with female clients that I'd have. Yeah, no, oh, yeah. 100%. Big one. All right. Today's giveaway, Map Strong, very popular workout program. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications. Do all of those things. If we like your comment and pick your comment as the winner, we'll let you know in the comment section. So that's the only place we'll let you know that you got free access to MapStrong. We also got a sale going on this month. Two programs are 50% off. The first one is our obstacle course racing program called MAPS OCR. The second one is our endurance-based workout program called MAPS Cardio. Both are 50% off. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below to get yourself signed up with that 50% off discount. All right, here comes the show. Speaking of the forum, great, uh, I don't know if I'd say great, but uh, discussion on cancel culture. In there. What? <laughs> <laughs> Great. I, just, I, just Dude, okay. I don't know if that's the right word. So, I, you know, I waited to, I'm glad you brought it up because I I, I almost got, and you know, sometimes I, I. You did good. I'm going to tell you why you got good. Because I read your initial comment and it was annoyed Adam started coming out a little bit. So I, I, I'm like, I better comment before he, he goes off. And you didn't go off. I did it. You controlled yourself. Very I, well. well, and and what I, what I noticed was, and it's like the telephone game. You say something and then it gets misconstrued, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was referring to Grant Cardone is his response to the whole Peloton thing with Kanye West. And well, explain that for a second. So, so Pel what, Peloton decided to kick take his music off, right. right? As part of the whole like, and so Grant Cardone decided he's not going to buy any more Pelotons. My my point isn't the that. Uh, Peloton, I, and I said, cancel culture is dying. That was your initial comment. That was my initial comment. And my comment, why it meant that is because it's it's a market response. People, I'm okay with Peloton canceling Kanye. It's a private company. Do it. Yeah. Whatever. Okay. But what ends up happening is not what they, I think they anticipate. I think that a lot of times these companies are virtue signaling in hopes that it's going to help with sales. And I think it's starting to backfire. So that was my point of saying cancel culture is dying, is that here are these companies all virtue signaling in hopes that it's going to help their sales. But I think what's starting to happen is more and more people are speaking up against oh. the, them canceling them. And that's what I meant by cancel culture is dying. Not that I'm against... Peloton. I just like I was the guy who playbook I was the like guy who came out when yeah. Colin Kaepernick got fired from the NFL and supported the NFL because right. it's a private company. Yeah. He he would disobeyed something that's in the written in the in the book. They ended up they ended up letting him go. People were irate and crazy about it. I said no, it's a, a private company. He has every they have every right to do that. So Peloton has every right to do that. I'm I'm not a, I'm not against that. But what I think is funny is that all these people that think these companies are so virtuous and they really give a shit about racism and all this stuff. They don't give a shit about this stuff. They give a bottom line. When they get in a meeting, you know what they do? They sit around and go, listen, should we make this move? And the decision isn't something that like, oh, this is what's better for humanity. It's yeah. will this... Will this make us more profitable? Well, if it was, it'd be consistent in other countries that ban those like very. What a great things. point, Justin. Yeah. What a, what a great point. Yeah, I'd lo I'd love to see these companies advertise in, in countries where they throw gay people off rooftops yeah. and they you know Where's don't let them drive. No, yeah, okay, bro. If I could get up and hug you, I mean, I probably I, I would right now, Adam, because <laughs> that's one. I a hundred percent. In fact, if you you could find episodes where we talked about this at least three years ago. And we speculate because this one had start when companies started doing this. First off, there's two two things I want to address here with cancel culture. One, cancel culture as a market response is perfectly fine. In other words, private companies, private individuals deciding they're going to or not going to buy products because whatever they want, perfectly fine. Cancel culture as uh, compelled by government with legislation or coercion, totally wrong. That's an affront to liberty and freedom. So total, two separate things. But the cancel culture you're talking about I agree 100%. I think it's a terrible failing business strategy. And I 100%, and I think this is why, here's why. When a company takes a position, they have to, they're assuming that they're perfect, that they have no history that looks bad, that nobody could ever look at what they're doing and say, wait, you're hypocritical here. Here, you're doing a good job. Here, you're doing, like, it's impossible. Mm -hmm. These companies are opening the doors 
to get criticized and they all look hypocritical. Like Kanye, people canceling Kanye. Yet you have people who've said terrible shit about other people who still are allowed to do business or whatever. So when you're a company and you come out and you say, we're not doing business with this guy because of what he said. That's right. All you're doing is opening the door for people to go through your shit, your past, and be like, wait a minute. You're, you're not consistent here. You're, you're not consistent you're also, there. You're also politically dividing your consumer. Yeah, it's just a stupid yep. you're, strategy. Uh, you're in the business of uh, selling bikes or selling razors. or It's like you're not in you're not in the political game so why why dip your uh, dip your toes in there yeah. i think and i think they think it's going to be profitable for them and so they make that decision to do that and my point in making that comment is it's blowing up in their face totally. Canc and my point is cancel culture is dying and so i didn't get all fired up because the i don't remember who the girl was that was responding to me but she totally miss understood yeah. what I meant by that. I wasn't saying, because she, then she threw in my face, if you guys had somebody that was racist and saying all these things at work, That's would not you not you fire them? I'm, if they're an at-will employee. They work for me. I, I, if I didn't like them working for me, I would fire them. That's the beauty of yeah. having the business and running the business and making decisions like that. I'm not saying that uh, Peloton is at, at fault here. I'm saying it's funny to me that they make that decision thinking it's going to be a, a better profitable decision, not because they're doing something no, virtuous. No, they're, they're smarter to... The, like it's like, like Justin. What a great example you gave. It's like when the uh, when when Pride Month comes around, and you have all these companies displaying their you know rainbow flags and whatever. It, it's it, while selling products in countries that literally kill people for being gay and won't. They'll change their their movies. They'll change their advertising specifically for these countries. Yep. So it's all fake. And, yeah. and what happens is, which is oh, look completely lose me when yeah. When I see here's that. the deal. If you say nothing, you're better. You're better off. If you say something and you put you signal to everybody how great you are, you open yourself up for this kind of criticism and nobody's going to win that. Everybody is going to look bad. Nobody can be perfect on either, on any side. Yeah. So I agree with you. Netflix actually had to reverse. Remember, ne remember Netflix, yep. there was a big thing about Chappelle's comedy and then the, they started losing people as a result and people were unsubscribing or whatever. So they came out and told their employees, listen, we, we host, a, uh, we have a bunch of, you know, artists on here. Mm -hmm. You can do the deal with it or not. Don't work here if you don't like it. That was a total flip from how Netflix was appearing to be oh, totally. ori originally. Why? Because they started to see, oh, this is going to lose us money. Well, to your point, Adam, it's going to be interesting to watch the landscape now with like Twitter having this whole new shift uh, with Elon coming in and you're just seeing all these tweets kind of floating around now that are very interesting. Some like fact checks to the fact checking and um, like information that's like getting promoted out there. They're like, wait a minute, this is what he means. Here's the context behind that. And it's, it's interesting because because it, it is starting to shift in terms of like, you know, here's another perspective to consider. Do you, yeah. Well, the, you already see the narrative that's coming out to try and dethrone Elon from there already. Do you see what they yeah. said? The, the, uh, the N word is up by 500% on Twitter, you know, this week because Elon is now oh, taking, wow. taking over the company. Yeah. What does that mean? What yeah. percent was it before? How many are you talking about? Like, is that related directly to Elon? But that's the narrative that they're going to push now. So we'll see how he still He still has to make a platform that people want to be on. So there's always going to be... He's like, already came out and said, they're, they're just like Facebook, they're going to create a group yeah. that actually monitors. I think... Uh, like self governs I think yeah. it would be... Yeah, and I think it's... You know, look, here's the deal. You, you, first off, you want companies to be honest. So we have laws against lying to people and intentionally harming people. But what you want out of companies is you want companies to profit. You want companies to come up with ideas and solutions and products that are profitable because that's how we innovate. That's how we create. That's how we move humanity forward through innovation. Now, that also puts the responsibility squarely on the shoulders of the consumer. Because if all consumers want is drugs, alcohol, and pornography, that's where all of our innovation is going to go, right? But people don't like this. Consumers don't like the mirror to be turned on them. Oh, wait a minute. Is the reason why these products exist, these terrible products, is because we buy them? Like, yeah, it's because you buy them. It's because we buy them. Like, it's like when people complain about the WNBA not making any money. How many of these people are buying tickets to these games? How many people are giving money yeah. to the WNBA so that they become super profitable? Right. It's all bullshit. So I want companies to try to fight for our dollars and to be profitable because I want that responsibility to make those choices. And if I decide... <coughs> To buy something, then that's how I vote. Not this whole like come out and pretend you like you know you're you're good or not. Like that's bullshit. Speaking of that, did you guys see uh, the new feature on Instagram? What is it? Which one? So the new feature where so they've rolled it out. I know we've been offered it. I saw I saw the notification the on subscriptions. My yes, the four ninety nine subscription. And mm. what does that do? So basically, they're coming after OnlyFans. What? 
Oh, They're going to okay. let people get naked and shit like that on there? It's it's a subscription. It's private. So people pay four ninety nine, and they get this little badge next to their name. And now they have, they have a, uh, I think, a forum. And they can get, you can, you know how right now you can do your story and only family members that yeah, you've yeah, clicked yeah. on? Yeah. So there'll be content that you will Just be able to fans. post that'll only, the people that pay that four ninety nine subscription mm. will have access to. Wow. Which is basically coming directly after OnlyFans. Because right. right now, what is the, what's the hustle? You see all these girls on Instagram and they're, they're like in bikinis and half naked pictures and they get million followers on Instagram, but it's really to drive their. Yeah. But it's Netflix going to allow like Netflix, pornography, I mean, excuse me, not Netflix, excuse me, Instagram. Are they going to allow pornography and nudity though? Because remember OnlyFans, remember they came out and said, we're going to get rid of that. And, they, and like, then they 25 hours it was they just a mind. total PR stunt. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see uh, what they allow and what they don't. I mean, it's private now. So I mean, yeah, it, yeah but it's private. I wouldn't. But they're also publicly they held. Control that. Like that's that c investors might be like, Ugh. yeah, but the only way you see that content is if you're paying for it. I mean, it's I different. It's different if it's on a a open public plat. I mean, it's it's hosted by a publicly traded company and a public. Well, it's not technically it's not publicly traded because they're underneath uh, um, Facebook, right? Yeah. Well, Meta is. Yeah. Okay. So, but I mean, I I think because you're paying for it, there's going to be some loopholes on it, what they will allow and what they won't allow. They definitely are probably going to skirt the line. I mean, it, it's a yeah. 1.2 billion dollar space. Yeah. That OnlyFans basically has a monopoly on right Dude, now. Dude, did you hear? And so this is absolutely their oh, move. It's coming right. Because I, I don't know what, it. maybe Doug can look this up. I don't know what the percent, of the 1.2 billion, how much you guys think of that is uh, cre uh, content creators that are not using it as nudity. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, is there, like, because, I mean, we could technically Very do this. Few. We could have a show that we we put on on, you know, in that platform. Just have you wear a Speedo? Yes. Yeah, like, not completely naked. No, think of, think of. <laughs> <laughs> what percentage do you think it is? You guys think half? You think uh, eighty percent well, is nudity? So I could see, I could see them I'm saying the eighties. I could see them saying no nudity, no pornography. However, there's a lot of content creators on Instagram that could produce content and charge for it, and people would pay for it. So I think that that's probably the direction to go. I don't think that they go nudity and pornography. So that's why I asked the question mm -hmm. right now. How much do you think? I think it's significant. I don't know. I don't know what number to give out, but I think well, it's big enough. What would be that? What would, what's significant? Is 5% significant? Is 20% significant? I think, uh, no, I would say probably half. I would say at oh, least half. Oh, God, no way. No way. You don't think so? No. On OnlyFans? No. OnlyFans is 90% nudity. Really? Yes. You don't think it's at least half? No. Really? I mean, I don't even know one that's yeah. not. Well, I don't, Do you know, I don't know anybody who I, uses OnlyFans that is not putting out risque hey, fucking- I'll tell you about yeah. one girl. I'll tell you one girl what? who she figured out. So she's a pretty girl, right? Okay. She figured out how to instantly, very quickly, go from like unknown to the top 0.4% of OnlyFans accounts. 0. 0.4. So she's the she top She takes top. pictures she's one of her the feet. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> good, good guess. Though. Come on, man. <laughs> no. She lets her viewers or whatever uh, vote on polls to run her life. Wow. And they can come up so with polls. So smart. So literally they'll say, she'll so say. So she'll do this. Like, I'm going to go here or here. You guys vote. Yeah, what am I having for lunch? Choose your own adventure. Yeah. Like, like what am day. I eating for lunch? What kind of job should I How have? How noxious. They made her bring up with her boyfriend. So they, they keep, <laughs> should I stay with my boyfriend? They said no. But she made hell of money with people just kind of running her it's life. It's kind of I mean, brilliant, yeah, bro. It's interesting. I mean, do you remember those Choose Your Own Adventure books? Of course. Of course those those were so popular. I love those. Yeah. those were, I they tried those to do kids. that on Netflix. There was a little bit. Uh, I yes, saw that. Bear Grylls had one. My it failed, though, huh? Do it. Uh, I don't think so. I think the Bear Grylls one did okay. Uh, but yeah, they would shoot a couple different options and then you'd go back and like, I, I watched it, you know, speaking of streaming services that are doing new stuff. Uh, did you see what Disney plus just rolled out? They just dropped it like a couple days ago. What is it? The first, uh, short film that's AR. Oh really? Yeah. Wait so, a minute. so you have to, you wear AR goggles? No. Or? So you don't wear the goggles. So you actually download an app on your iPad or iPhone and then you stream the the short film. It's just a short, it's like their first rollout of it. And then you you're basically looking through the iPad at your TV, and that's it augments that reality. What? Yeah, yeah. It looks like a waterfall and trees being growing inside your house and stuff. It's, wow, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, pull, it's very cool. What a it, trip. Yeah, it looks really interesting. And I could see I know they're banking hard that like AR is gonna be the thing versus the virtual reality. Yeah. They're trying to like so if I so if that, I right? had to guess, I would say AR. I would say AR too. So it's the I. easiest, right? It so is. It is. For it's the consumer. E it's the it's the easiest for them to create. It's the easiest. Plus, for you don't the have consumer. to completely disappear into another world. That's right. And you can apply it to everyday life. Yeah, I I do think that AR is more likely to take off first. So here it is, right there. 
Wow. See how the, really the water cool. falls in the living room? Did you try it? No, I didn't try it. I actually just read about it this morning. And uh, this is actually, I think, the exact article I was reading. But um, it's their first test in that market. And I don't know. It looks cool. I'm going to try it when I get home. I mean, I'm interested. Check in, that out. Yeah. Speaking of shows, I have a show that I think you'll like. And I know you're a dick about this, Adam. <laughs> Always talking about whatever Sal recommends shitty shows. Yeah. No, though, yeah. this is pretty good. Jessica found it. So I'll tell you guys the premise, and you guys let me know what you think. Okay. So Steve Carell's in it, by the way, and it's not a comedy. It's actually a, it's like a really. I've seen some of his serious roles. He does a pretty. He did good a good job. job in, there's what serious role did I see him in that I really liked? He's he's done morning some, show. Yes. Oh yeah, morning that was, show. He, did, okay. he crushed that. So that listen to the show. premise of this fucking show. It's actually really good. So it's called <laughs> The Patient. So he's this like brilliant psychotherapist who's you know an author, and he sees patients and he helps heal them or whatever. He gets this guy who comes in. And this dude is trying to get help from him. And after so many sessions, Steve Carell, who's the doctor, is like, listen, you're, it, it, you're not progressing because you're not being honest and open with me. You have to be open. You have to tell me. You have to trust me so I can help you. And they go back and forth. And the guy you can tell is getting a little irritated. He leaves. Well, anyway, next thing he knows, Steve Carell wakes up. He's in this room and he's in this bed. And he tries to get up and he's chained to the bed. And he's like, what the fuck? And he starts panicking, whatever. Anyway, the dude that he was helping walks in and he goes, you know what? He goes, I, I, what you said I think is true. He goes, this is the only way I can be totally honest to you. And he's a serial killer. And he's trying to not be a serial killer. And he tells Steve Carell's character, basically, I'm not going to let you go until you cure me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that that is sound Holds interesting. It's a fucking good show, dude. Interesting. Each it's, episode is it's pretty intense. What's it on? What's it on? Hulu. Oh, it's on Hulu. It's on, so it's an it FX has... show. Oh, interesting. Yeah. It's actually really good, dude. That does that plot sounds good. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. I got you. Yeah, yeah. You would you can at least give me an and then episode aliens too. come on. No, <laughs> <laughs> Just was like I'll watch it. What? Yeah, yeah. Let's get this is cool. Yeah. There's another uh, docu series I saw on Netflix. Maybe you guys have seen this. It's called Aftershock. Have you guys seen this? Uh -huh. This was during the 2015 earthquake in Nepal, hmm. and there there it, there was film captured by people trying to climb Mount Everest. And that fucking earthquake triggered crazy avalanches and Whoa. shit. It is frightening. Yikes. Terrifying. Oh my God. It's like worst Super case scenario. Super crazy uh, Dude, 89 earthquake. I remember. So the World Series was going on the Battle of the Bay yeah. at the time, right? Yeah. And we went to the Battle of the Bay the day before. And we were up in the, the nosebleeds. And I, I remember going back over the Bay Bridge and like doing the whole thing. And then the next day, just watching on TV, the Bay Bridge Collapsing. doing this and then psh, like smashing cars. And you were and, just on it? Yeah, no. dude. Oh, no, I remember no, just dude. like, oh. Yeah, my uncle was at the game the day before also. And then I remember being in the shower when that happened. I actually fell out of the shower. It was so bad. Wow. That was that was that was probably the worst earth, earthquake I've ever experienced. Yeah, oh, yeah oh, so, it was the biggest we've so, had. So the other day we're in here interviewing was Eric uh, on the show, yeah. uh -huh. and uh, we're in, it's, we we actually kept it on. Our editors kept it in the in the in the show. Yeah, which good I job, was guys. That's great. As we're interviewing him, earthquake starts to hit and it starts rumbling, and it ended up being what, like a five point yeah, two 5 .2 or something or like that. Or something like that. Um, but yeah, it was pretty weak for sure. You could tell all of us we're just waiting for it to get worse. Yeah, no, that's how like, the big one happened. I'm like this. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, is this the precursor? Because <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's like that. Like the aftershocks sometimes are even bigger. Oh yeah, dude. I remember that with the in '89. It threw me off the couch, and I just sat there waiting for it to end. That was a terrifying, yeah. terrifying experience. Well, speaking of terrifying, I'm finally going to bring this up about the British pilot. I know you guys have been like antsy about it, well, but, all right, what happened? dude. So okay, this this flight. I don't know what year this was, but uh, basically there was some kind of um, explosive like decompression uh, where the the windshield blew off. Like it literally blew off as they took off of a plane of the plane, uh, and it pulled the the pilot out <laughs> outside the plane, and he hooked his feet around. Um, around the steering wheel to keep him from basically just flying off to his imminent death. And he was able to hold himself like outside and <laughs> smash himself on the plane wow. for 20 minutes until it landed. And so it went into no autopilot way. landed. He survived and had like bruises and things like from just getting what? smashed. But like, yeah, that was it. I was like, there's no way it sucked him outside. Like the, what you'd think would be like the worst that thing is possible. Terrifying. Yeah. What's the closest what are the closest near death experiences you guys have had? Uh, my, do, do you my, have any that? You, yeah, oh yeah, remember yeah, my tractor story I told I got you guys? One. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, when I was uh, let's see here, I was twenty years old. I had just uh, no, I was even younger than that actually. I take that back. I was seventeen years old. I just started working at the dairy, maybe my second week on the job, 
And uh, the the owner of the farm is like, uh, hey, you ever driven a tractor before? And I'm like, no. He's like, all right, I'm going to teach you today. And I'm like, okay. So we are going to, we have 100 acres and we're on the top of this hill and we are going to go down and fertilize the 100 acres. At the bottom of the hill is where like basically the main fence pole starts. And it's like we have a, a telephone pole that's uh, cemented into the ground and then all the fences run off of that and there's a canal on the left and the right and i'm at the top of it and he's teaching me how to use a loader and load up this big old tractor full of wood ash so i learn how to do that i fill it all up and then he's like okay now it's time to to drive this one out and now this is a real slow one he's like now when you get going He's like, this one doesn't have any brakes, so just keep, <laughs> just That's keep awesome. it. He's like, just keep it in a low gear. It'll the tractor will slow itself down. And anybody's ever driven like a tractor like that, if you keep it in a low gear, the the engine will do all the yeah. slowing down. You don't got you don't need any brakes. So he's also just you know keep it keep it in a low gear as you're you know coming down the hill and let the tractor do all the work. And so I'm like, okay, so I'm actually like right at the like the crown. So I need to come over and then come down this hill, and I put it in you know what they call granny gear, and it's like literally. I mean, I'm like, it's craw crawling. Yeah, it's crawling. I'm like, it's going to take me 15 minutes just to get to the top of here. So I, I go to put it in the next gear and it's a, a little bit faster. I put it in the next gear and a little bit more faster. Okay. So I'm starting to come over the top like this. And now I'm coming over the top and I'm like, okay, I better put it back down in a low gear. Well, I already had gained enough speed. Well, you couldn't get it in. So <clears throat> and then it's gaining more and more speed. And I keep trying to shove it down in a lower gear. But and now it's in neutral. <laughs> and then it's in neutral. And now I'm heading down the hill. I got like a thousand pounds of wood ash oh, behind no. me. And I'm in this trailer and it gets going so fast my fucking front tires are bouncing and i'm like steer the right <laughs> yanks through the right <laughs> steer left and there's a canal canal and i have this little pathway that i'm trying to catch the wheels and get between and it's doing this down the hill <laughs> and i fucking bah, <laughs> into the freaking canal and wood ash everywhere battery flying off the off the oh end god. oh god you dude. stayed on i actually stayed I would have jumped off you that road it out road. i would have been afraid of running me over oh that's true yeah the thing was out of control and i have a huge trailer behind wow. me that i was pulling so that scared that that was near death i never heard that story that's crazy. yeah i told it like at the very beginning of the when we first met i told that story remember do you remember i told you the my welding story too I had two near death experiences at the oh. dairy. Yeah, so I had another experience where my boss was teaching me. I learned all this like stuff at this at this place, right? So I'm learning to weld this day. And uh where he's and he's teaching me how to do it and he's like, "Hey, go go plug this in over at the, you know, the 220 volt whatever like that." And he hands it to me and this welder has to be from like 1930. Like the fucking thing is like the it's all wires are all sticking out of oh it i'm holding God. it it's all so i already <laughs> yes so I'm, so I'm already looking at it kind of like okay yeah. getting minimal wage so, yeah, yeah. 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 yes bro i'm making 450 an hour yeah, right? so i go running over to uh where we where all the the, the plug is at and uh, which also happens to be in this like uh where we milk the cows so and we had just done we had just finished milking the morning the morning shift and so there's like little puddles of water and stuff, and I'm in oh tennis God. shoes, and I go. <laughs> this is puddles of water. <laughs> this yeah, is wires awesome. exposed. Bro. 220, not just regular bro. voltage. <laughs> well, see, here's what I've I've actually had people tell me that I'm actually lucky it was a 220 and not a oh, 110. Really? I was more I would have been more likely to die if it was a 110 than a 220. The 220 was so powerful it fucking went through me. Oh, okay. and it actually went right. through my feet, and I like levitated like six inches. Wow! And it was the fucking. Did you get knocked out, or you just felt it? I didn't knock out. I just felt it, but then I felt so Did you have weird. Any burn marks or anything? No, like... I, no, I didn't have anything like that. Like I didn't, and I didn't see electricity wow, go through me. But it, I plugged it, and when I right when I plugged it, bah! You hear this? And it shoots me up off the ground. I come down, and I kind of fall a little bit, and I just. It levitated. Hey, David Blaine hey, for a second. And then you went back to work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you didn't go home. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> then I went over there and learned how to weld. You know what I'm oh, saying? So, God, yeah. So, those dude. are two, two near death experiences that I had. For what sure. about you, Justin? Yeah, I had a few, and they're mainly like driving incidences, but um, this one was on black ice when we were coming back from. We were practicing music and it was real late. It was like two or three in the morning and I was on a five lane freeway. And so it was, we were in Chicago on our way back to Chicago uh, from, I think it was like Iowa or something. And uh, we just hit this one spot and I was driving. And so I'm driving my Jeep 
and I didn't see it. And it, we hit just a whole huge patch of ice because it was like it totally blended in. And so I lost complete control. And so I was trying to kind of steer. And then when I steered, it was like, Woo, and the, the whole car turned sideways. I was like, oh, that's not it. And just a little correction this way, near the whole thing went the other side to the point where I started actually spinning around in a circle. And then I finally kind of got it to go straight again, but I was going the wrong way. <laughs> and so I was like pointed straight. And then I saw in the distance because it was so late, there wasn't a lot of cars out on the road, but here comes like two semis, like oh. literally you could see, like, I just vividly remember these headlights and I was, and then my car stopped and I almost stalled it. And so I had to like literally, actually I did stall it. And so the whole thing died. And, and then I'm watching it all kind of encroach upon me and so i had to turn it back on literally like punched it and it was a stick shift so i had to punch it and then go and i darted like directly across all five lanes to get past and then meow, they, they just oh. like narrowly missed us wow what about you dude you well, stuff like that i had so i well one is one was legit the other one's kind of funny so the, the the legit one i was in a car with all my friends we were probably maybe 18, 19. In fact, I think they were, it was, it was uh, friends of mine from 24. So some GMs and stuff. And we were in my buddy's Mercedes. We're at a stoplight and we're all talking and laughing deep into conversation. Didn't realize that the light turned green. So the light turns green for us to go, but we didn't, he wasn't paying attention. Car started honking behind us. It was like, oh, okay. And he gets ready to go. And a semi went through the red light and literally hit the brakes and slid in front of us. Had we gone when the light was green, That's we would have died. Isn't that wild when shit like that happened? That was weird because yeah. it, it literally- Somebody it was a, watching out for you. There was like inches in front of us. We all like, oh, shit, and just went, right in front of us and kept going. We're like, dude, if we went when the light turned green, we would have been dead. That's wild. Then the second one, this was this one's a little more funny, but I was uh, 16 and I was kind of, you know, when you're 16, <clears throat> you're just stupid. So I had this truck that I bought. And I put, I put like an exhaust on. I thought it was fast. It was a four cylinder Toyota. But anyway, <laughs> I was racing. I, there was this bigger truck that was on the road. I used to race everybody in my car. Always. Anytime somebody I thought they were, you know, could rate, they want to race, I would race them. Yeah. And what you did when you were a kid, I don't know if people still do this, but when you, when you beat someone, you get in front of them Flash and you turn on your hazards. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it's like showing them that you yeah, won, yeah, right? Yeah. So there's this big truck, light turns green. I, brrr, and I get in front of them, I hit the hazards and I flip them off. Like, haha, I beat you. <laughs> Well, anyway, I'm sure he didn't like that. He pulls up next to me, <laughs> yeah. and it's literally the biggest human I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> it was this, it, it was this massive, roided out bodybuilder, yeah, red, red vein, like veins and a red face, and he's yelling so hard, he's spitting through the passenger side. I'm gonna fucking kill you. And I'm looking at him and I go, I'm just a kid, man. I'm just a kid. <laughs> I'm just a kid. Literally, when I kept saying to him, hey, man, me. <laughs> I'm just a kid. Well, anyway, he's following me. There's a red light. I couldn't go anymore, so I had to stop. He pulls in front of me, gets out of his car, and he tries to rip my rearview mirror off while I'm telling him, I'm just a kid, man. And I'm like trying to back up, like, do I have to run this guy over? He gets in his car, takes off. Anyway, uh, I don't know, a month later, he comes into the 24 to work out with one of my trainers. This guy was a pro bodybuilder. Did didn't, he recognize you? No, he didn't. Oh, thank God. So I see him walk in. I'm like, oh, Ooh. shit. All right. All right. Let's, let's see what happened. Anyway, he's just, like just introducing himself, working out. And I'm like, bro. <laughs> I, God he didn't yeah, I'm like, that's the guy, dude, that almost <laughs> killed me in my car oh after I cut God. him off. I've been stuck Yikes. in uh, two blizzards, too. That was, I would say, one of the oh, both those scary, those, Yeah, dude. both those times were like... Uh, like the other events were like fast, right? Like it was instantaneous. The I mean, although it felt like a long time, that whole crash on the tractor, the the yeah. being electrocuted, that was like so quick. But two times I was stuck. One time I was stuck driving around Tahoe, and I got stuck on a blizzard on the part where you're right over like Incline Village area, where it's like a two lane and like mm -hmm. between South. And you and just North. pulled like, over. You have to wait it out. No, we had we were we had to drive. I had to get home. We had to get home. We're in the middle. It was like midnight, and we were. I mean, I just drove like four miles an hour the whole way, and you couldn't see any road or anything. So that was scary as shit. And then I got stuck in a blizzard on t riding while snowboarding. I got stuck in a blizzard on top of the mountain. Alarms started going off and everything, and it was so scary going down. I remember being with uh, two of my friends and you like we were all like holding hands and you couldn't even see the person like you're holding hands with how bad it was blowing from side to side and you couldn't tell where the path was or you're like you're riding like this with your hands out just so you don't hit a tree because you can't see anything it was wow hell was scary well speaking of scary stuff uh remember how we talked about recently this whole like oh watch out they might put 
fentanyl in your kid's mm. Halloween oh, candy or whatever. Halloween candy. Always scare. This is an urban legend, by the way. That's been it's been circulating for decades, right? It used to be razor blades, and it was, you know, LSD and you mm -hmm. know whatever. And now it's fentanyl. But um, here's the real thing: you need to check your candy, your kid's candy for. This is real now. There are psychos out there. That will put almond joy in your kids' candy. <laughs> Get that shit out yeah, of there. Yeah, they're real psychopaths. Who the hell eats almond joy? <laughs> Nobody. Disgusting. Or the mounds. Even worse. Yeah, right? At least there's no one's <laughs> coconut <laughs> like candy. That's gotta, it says nobody. That's got to be one of those candies. It says your 90-year-old grandma. That's it. <laughs> hey, I feel yeah. like it's a candy that you either love or you hate. Because I guarantee we'll get some mad, some mad. No, you got to be like 80 or 90 if you really love that stuff. I like coconut, but I don't even like coconut candy. Like coconut candy is different. It's, like, yeah. it's gross, dude. It is yeah. It's not candy. When I was a kid, I got it. Like, so mad. Like chocolate covered prunes or something. You always try to trade, you know, try trade somebody with it. Yeah, dude. <laughs> it's disgusting. Yeah. Hey, it's so funny to me that that's something that I remember when it first came out again this year. And I, and I called it right away. I'm like, why did they? It's like the same time of the year every year, and so you know why this one's making its rounds right now because they're they're capturing parents fentanyl. get scared easy. Yeah, That's well they're they're cap first. You're right. It's every year they do this, but they 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 they're capturing fentanyl, getting smuggled across the border, and it's being placed in boxes of candy. Uh, so that's why that's uh, what's going on. Uh, but the the the. Again, the odds that a drug dealer no, is going to give away never, his drugs never. and it's easily get traced to his around. address. Never. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah never. No. Like, <laughs> if, if, if a kid gets it, it is 100% by accident. It is, not yeah. by, it is not like nobody is like trying to poison kids with drugs. They're plus, to, plus, you know, I, would, I don't know, taste, taste it. Like, oh, this doesn't taste like candy. Spit it out. It's probably not candy, yeah. you know. I mean, also you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't do it in a, or I wouldn't, I wouldn't let my kid eat a, um, you know, like a homemade, homemade looking candy. I mean, if it's in a sealed box of Good and Plenties or something weird like that, like I, I doubt that. Bro, they used to give away when I was a kid. I remember this one neighbor, my grand, because we used to trick or treat my grandparents' neighborhood. There was this one neighbor that would give away like, uh, uh, like homemade caramel apple. Oh yeah. Homemade though, that was yeah. a thing, dude. I know that wasn't when we were kids. When, I know. We, were, when we were kids, used to used to, used to but do. But that's right about that's that's, pro, that's when it started. To get to well, that's that's when they yeah they stopped to, they stopped doing that. That was popular when we were kids. Like I, that and like the popcorn balls. Like, yeah, was like yeah. popcorn yeah. balls, as, as caramel well. apples. Like I mean, when I was a kid, we go when we go trick or treating, you would have at least like I don't know. Uh, a third of the candy was like homemade, homemade treats. Stuff, yeah, yeah, the the, the it was a different time back and then. Pencils. You know? All the neighbors knew each other. Yeah. They all talked pencils. to each other. The, pe yeah, the pencil pencils. house got TP. <laughs> Thanks. But, yeah, I took. We took. Uh, or we, the wax lips. What the? F yeah. Wax what is that? Lips. Yeah. Disgusting. We took. We took Those Max. Uh, trick or treating. Uh, wet. We went down to Salinas and we we walked. Um, up and down. Like so, they do the thing where they like close the streets off, and so the, oh, all yeah. the stores yeah. had it. It's so cool because uh, we don't give him candy. So he's so enthralled by the process of it. Like he didn't, he, he did this whole thing, all this candy, totally forgot about it after his nap and just had never asked about it again. So he's never got. He has no idea. He has no idea. He, yeah. He just thought it was so cool to go. He's on a treasure hunt. Yeah. Right? That's right? all. Yeah. I mean, he's just into the colors and all the wrappers and all the, yeah. all the stuff, you know? And so he did the whole process of going trick or treating was a, was a blast for him. And it was, and for me, I was like, you know, fretting as a dad i'm like god is he yeah what are we gonna how are we gonna manage this and i'm gonna do this titrate this and it's like didn't even ask about it dude. it's funny how like costumes have evolved over the years like now it's like you get all these like inflatable costumes is like the, the new thing and yeah. like my kids are so into like so everett's gonna be like this uh, sumo guy right and so it, it, it's so funny because he's walking around he's like super wide and just like uh this this huge like ball you know to deal Bro, with costumes but, have come a long way dude they're oh, all really good yes yeah, when i was a kid i used to my mom used to buy my costume at the grocery store and it was the plastic vinyl you put it over you Remember the plastic mask and the plastic vinyl yeah, covering? Yeah, That's no. what I used to wear. Yeah. yeah. You just had like two little slits they cut out. Yeah. Yeah. By, by the way, speaking of costumes, Doug killed you guys. He oh, won. Awesome. I know. He won he the costume. He, he won the costume contest. Well, yeah. That so was the I best. don't know how it voted because everybody voted. And then I'm like, dude, how is this even possible? Doug just smashed it. Because, because uh, Sarah and Justin, who supposedly won, yeah. cheated. <laughs> they filled themselves out like 20 times and that's why Doug was second I mean they had great Doug, costume but like Doug no, was it wasn't definitive. even close if anything Katrina and I were I thought Katrina and I were gonna crush yeah, you everyone you guys did too and yeah. then we came and I saw Doug and I'm like fucking Doug brought his A game so dude. good so good but like yeah. he was in he full chose character the, I didn't even know it was him yeah I didn't either he came in like, <laughs> like Uncle Baby Billy and I'm like <laughs> 
You had his Bible well, it took and everything. me like five minutes How'd to you realize get the teeth? it was Doug. Were those a pro- I like- bought the teeth. This company called Dr. Buck. It's online. You actually, uh, you heat the teeth up on, with steam. Oh, it molds and you, to you? And it molds to your own teeth wow. so you can actually wear them and talk. Wow. Now, did you did you like piece every part of that together or did you buy like, because it would look so good if you piece that together. No, I pieced it together. Yeah, see, I just awesome. bought a wig on Amazon. I bought the uh, the teeth and some glasses, sunglasses I thought. It, would it was so good. good. Glasses were on point. It yeah, was, it was so good. Yeah, it just so funny, everybody knows man. it's Baby Billy from the Righteous Jumps. Yeah, yeah no, I'll have the, I'll, I have a video, so I'll, ha- I'll have Andrew and them throw a video yeah, up in this so they could see I, it. I saw Justin's. I knew yeah. it right away. You were, you were, uh, what's yeah, the Jack Burton always the what? obscure reference guy. I mean, yeah. I knew I it when they were together. It. When they were separate, I didn't know it at first. Once they were to go together, then it was like, oh, okay, I got the costume now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, you know, Big Trouble in Little China is one. Of yeah, my it's just one of my. It's just like anybody who grew up, you know, like that was the go to when I get sick or it was raining or like I watched that movie so many times. So I was like, it's weird to me that this, people don't know that movie. It's but, great. Well, I mean, there's a lot of people that know my, my family. So half my family didn't know what Katrina and I were. Like I had half my family. Like, oh, Oh my god, that's uh, so good! You guys are spot on. And then I had other people I like, what? "Yeah, that's how it goes." Yeah, yeah. We were from Yellowstone. We were, oh, we were yeah. rip, rip, and back. I knew you guys were, but I didn't. I didn't even watch the show yet. So, oh, so like, you have yeah, I'm not even like, oh, yeah, yeah. So we 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 pulled from that. And so if you watched the show, you knew right away because I thought we were pretty pretty spot on with the with the costume. But Doug, 100 oh, yeah. percent That's great. Well, yeah, it is getting yeah. uh, uh, the weather is changing a little bit, so that's why I know we're supposed to talk about Viore. Now I got my I get to put on my long sleeves. Do you guys like their long sleeve stuff? I do. Oh yeah, I love this. Yeah. Is the, this is, Super I think comfy. Andrew said this was the Strato tech, I think. Love it. It's I, I don't have one. I have their Henley and I have one of their hoodies and then I have mm-hmm. their, their. No, I like it because it's kind of like, like it, you know, kind of shaped. You know, the my body. They, have, they have a new flannel out. I was like so excited. That's because of you. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it is. I've been like hammering them about it. They put that really cool one. It was like dark blue. I have it. And then they have a white one. I think they now have like a brown one. So I'm like, okay. Uh, my my uh, flannel stock's going up. I here. went to, so I went to the pumpkin patch the, uh, with. Uh, Jessica oh, I have a and Aurelius. Story for you, oh, good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I went there and uh, and you know just kind of hang out, whatever. And Jessica's getting pretty close to having this baby, so like let's walk around and see what happens. Right. Anyway, you know, I ran into, I, I forgot his name. Sorry, I can't give you a shout out because I forgot his name. Jackie's brother was there. Oh yeah. So some guy comes up with his wife and they nice. introduce themselves. Real nice people. And they bought me a freaking latte. I, I got in line behind them and they paid for my latte. Oh, so nice, so oh, nice of them. That's that the way a fan should. <laughs> 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 Buy me. You want to introduce yourself? <laughs> Buy, Buy me something. a gift. Then say hi. No, dude. I was very nice. <laughs> hey, I want to give hey, a shout out. Speaking of punk bands, you just remind me. So, dude, my son is like going through uh, the stuff that's coming out of his mouth is like off the chain right now. So he just says random shit that I just would not not expect him to say. So he gets, we take him to the pumpkin patch like like almost a month ago now. And so we, he's been back to the pumpkin patch like four times. Like he has a blast and Katrina will just take him over there and there's lots of stuff for him to do. And I pick him up from school the other day <clears throat> and he's like, daddy, pumpkin patch. And I'm like, no, no we're going to go home. We're going to do this. And he's like, you could tell he's getting frustrated with me because he keeps saying it over and over. And I said, Max, we're not, we're not going to the pumpkin patch right now. And he goes, daddy's bald. <laughs> what? Wow. <laughs> How does he know that that's yeah, an insult? Like, so who's been saying that around part, you? Okay, so the other day it was just like because that's few, different than an observation. Right, he knows okay, it's in, okay. So it's from a, a few nights before that, wow. we were reading in bed with him, and he was, you know, he was at nighttime. He's the best. He's playful and funny and stuff like that. And he's and he was standing up in his bed while I'm reading, and he's and I don't have my hat on, so he's like rubbing my head, and he's like, "Daddy bald, mommy hair. Daddy bald, mommy hair." And he keeps he keeps yeah. saying that. And I'm like, "Yes, yes, daddy's bald, son. Yes, daddy." <laughs> Paul. So that was so that was the first time I'd heard it, which was already kind of funny. Like, okay, that he's pieced uh, that yeah, together. Right. But he literally said this like a fucking jab. To hurt you. Yeah, it was like a, I was <laughs> like, telling him no. He was irritated with me, and the look on his face was like, "Daddy's bald." I was just like, "What?" Did you start laughing yeah. right away? Yeah, of course I did. I was just yeah. like, this "Well, yeah, well, you poop your pants." You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. What'd you say? Daddy bald now. Daddy's bald now. Yes. My no. Stop telling, stop telling people I'm bald. I couldn't believe he said that to me, man. I, he's, it's so funny right now, though. He uh, just, the random stuff. His other thing he does, too, is uh, later. So, like, you'll tell him, like, Max, would you pick up your toys? We're going to go, we're going to leave right now. Later, Daddy. Yeah. Later. <laughs> no, like, no, not like, he makes the hey, rules. It's, hey, it's time, it's time for your bathroom now. Later, Dad. Later. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, bro. Right now, not later. <laughs> yeah, kids, dude, they're hilarious with that. So. That's great. Uh, anyway, I, we're supposed to mention Felix Gray today. And, I, I, you know, I thought, just to keep it simple, 
it's got to be the easiest way to positively affect your sleep. There's so many things you could do for sleep to in make, terms of an intervention. Yeah, just wear the very their, simple one. That's it. You just wear blue light blocking glasses. They make them clear, so it doesn't change everything. <clears throat> just do that, and you should notice an improvement. So I have. You know, obviously, I have friends and family that wear them. Mm -hmm. And it's just an easy, you don't have to change anything. Just put them on two hours before bed. That's it. To me, it's the most realistic thing to do because I, I, I actually try not to. What I try and do is turn the lights off, do the fire, candlelight yeah. thing. And the reality of it is that there's many times, especially now that we're heading into winter and, and it'll get dark really early. Mm -hmm. This will be even more so. So I find myself using them even more now because it'll get dark and it'll still be like five or six. So the TV's still going. We still have fluorescent lights inside the house. And so... Just training yourself to put those on. I mean, ideally, like we always talk about, the natural, holistic way is ideal. But let's be honest, how many people are disciplined not to, after the sun goes down, look at their phone, get on their iPad, get on their computer, watch television? That's what I mean. We have to consider, when you consider interventions to improve your health, the biggest, number one, I guess the, the most important factor is adherence. Is this something that people will actually do? Because there's ideal and then there's realistic. That's an easy, put them on, do whatever you normally do, and you'll mm -hmm. notice an improvement. Yeah, and it's a one-time purchase. Once you own it, you're good. That's it's it. not like something you have to be buying every single month. It's like you have right. it, and then as long as you discipline yourself to- And it doesn't make everything orange or red, so- yeah. Well, that's what sold me on it was that the original ones that that I remember you used to you wear. You can't watch TV with those things. Yeah, yeah. I was like, hell no, orange, dude. Yeah. No way. It just distorts everything. <laughs> Organifi is a company that produces high-quality ingredients, convenience, and great tasting. These are supplements that are plant-based, organic, and free of glyphosate residues. Some of the, my favorite products are the superfood blends, like their green juices, red juices, and gold juices. But they also have protein powders and much more. Go check this company out. Go to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash mind pump. Then use the code mind pump for 20% off. All right, here's the rest of the show. Our first caller is Pierce from California. What's happening, Pierce? How can we help you? Hey, guys. How are you doing today? Good. All right. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. Um, so, yeah, calling from California. I'm here in Davis, so I always feel like I'm kind of close to you guys. It's nice to virtually meet you. Um, glad to hear you're having a good day. I guess I'll, I'll go ahead and get started with my question. So, I recently started a new job, and I really enjoy it, but it's quite stressful. And I know my future academic and career goals will also involve a lot of uh, challenge and stress. So while I would describe myself as a fellow fitness fanatic, I'm realizing training hard for specific fitness goals doesn't seem to be the best for me right now um, and may not be the best for me as I enter uh, the field of medicine. So in the past, I've heard you guys talk about having your training complement your lifestyle if your work or school is already very stressful um, as opposed to just training really hard in every area of life. Uh, so my question is, how would you advise that I approach and think about training as I continue down this career path? Uh, what should my baseline training look like? And my goal isn't necessarily to build a ton of muscle or have crazy fitness, but just be generally healthy and feel good so I can enjoy recreational activities and push myself in, in my career. Oh, great. You Really good question, Pierce. And you, and you positioned it very well. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like the way you asked what you asked. So right now you said you have a stressful job. What do, what do your hours look like? And what do you mean by stressful? So for me, this is my first real job. I just recently graduated college, so I'm not quite even working full-time yet. It's about 30 hours a week, but the whole time I'm there, it's kind of nose to the grindstone. It requires a lot of attention and focus. I'm working in a lab in Davis, and it's uh, a lot of ways you can mess up the procedures I'm doing, so I have to be very on my toes like all day. Got it. And then when do you start medical school, what kind of medicine? I'm applying to both um, osteopathic and allopathic schools. So that's MD and DO. I'm hoping to start next July. Very cool. Yeah, so definitely that whole process is going to require quite a bit of you. So, th I, And the reason why I said I like the way you posed the question is you said, how should I start thinking about fitness? And I think that's the right way to ask this question because I could give you, and I will, I will give you one of our programs that I think will, will probably benefit you. But I, the way that you ask the question is so great because there's really a way that you should think about fitness so that you can mold it properly according and based to your lifestyle. So there's a few things you want to look at when you're looking at working out in a way to improve your life. And one of them is, does my do my workouts provide me with more energy? Do they improve my ability to do my job, improve my ability to be a good partner, to be a friend? Do they improve my sleep? 
Do they just make me feel better? So that's that's the number one thing you want to ask because a workout that's too hard or a workout that where your life focus is your workout does the opposite. Like I'm training super hard, so I have less energy to do good in school or less energy to be a good partner or you know I have to find time to take naps so that I can train so hard. So it's a totally different philosophy. So that's what you want to ask yourself. And you want to do, Adam has said this a million times, you want to do the, the the least amount of work to elicit the best results with that. So rather than thinking to yourself, what can I add to my workout? Think to yourself, how little can I do and accomplish these goals? How little can I work out and feel great and feel strong and feel mobile while I'm doing all of these different things? And for most people, for most fit people, I mean, depending on how busy your lifestyle is, you know, it could be like 20 minutes every single day, like 20 minutes a day every single day with some structure, strength training. And then in addition to that, just trying to increase activity in your everyday life. So like, okay, after lunch, after dinner, I like to take a 15 minute walk or while I'm you know, reading these papers, I'm going to get on the floor, do some mobility work or when I'm writing this, uh, you know, whatever I'm going to be writing for school or whatever, I'm going to stand uh, rather than sit. Like combining those two, you'll have uh, great results as you continue to move through all of this stuff. I like awesome. I like him having maps anabolic as like a foundation for like when you feel good or like maybe when your workload isn't bad like for right now and then maps 15 to toggle between when totally. you have mm-hmm. a higher stress week let's say. So and that's how I do it cuz I think uh, I think maps anabolic is a perfect program for you that does require 3 days a, a week in the gym of 1 hour at a time or at your home gym. I don't know if you have a home gym, but you have 3 hours basically a work a week if you have a crazy work week, then I think MAPS 15 would be a great way to kind of toggle back and forth between the two programs, and you could totally do that. Um, So to me, those are the first two that come to mind. The only thing that I would potentially add to that is some sort of a a mobility component, uh, you know, to- to Prime Pro. Yeah. Yeah, because in Prime Pro, you have all these different movements for different parts of your body, and you can learn a few that you really like. And then when you have, when you're doing something where you can simultaneously- get into a position on the floor, or if you have like a five minute break, uh, mobility, like you can't, you really can't do overdo it. It's not, uh, like a workout in the sense that it requires tons of re- recovery. Um, and the more you practice mobility movements, the better you get, uh, at, with the mobility and stability. So I think, but I think I, I agree with that. So we're going to send you maps anabolic for free, but maps 15 awesome. would be a great program to just to have so that you can have 15, 20 minute workouts, daily workouts when things get really hectic and crazy. That'd be great. I actually already have a uh, uh, map stand anabolic. I wanted a little little plug here. I actually was a I was a personal trainer for about two years through the end of college, and you guys really helped me uh, just you know help a lot of other people. So I wanted to thank you guys for that. And I actually kind of stole some things from anabolic and starter and stuff to kind of help some of my beginner clients. And that was also helpful to me as I was learning how to uh, do effective programming and stuff. So thank you guys for that. Yeah, no problem. We appreciate it when trainers use our stuff. We really like that. So in in that case, I'll send you maps 15. And then, um, like I said, maps prime pro would be useful and maybe even mass performance would be useful now that I know that you've done maps anabolic already. Okay, cool. Thank you guys. No problem, man. Thanks for calling in. Yeah. Have a good week. You got it. He, uh, totally positioned that. Obviously now Looking back, he had the trainer background, right? Yeah, he yeah. he asked it right, so it makes sense why he asked it. That's that why way. he presented it like that. Yeah, because <laughs> it's really about uh, the mentality around yeah. your workouts. That's going to guide you, not so much what's the workout I can do, because you have to be able to modify it as well, things change. Yeah, and to anticipate like how your life is, style is going to change like that, and to be able to start seeing mm-hmm. like this one will complement me best in terms of my stress levels will help me recuperate. You know, like you got to really understand like too much volume, too much load. Um, you know, we're going to need to back off. So having a plan going ahead is, is great to, I, to think about. I love too, that he didn't have any real like aesthetic goals or major performance goals. It was really like, I just want to feel strong, feel healthy, feel good. I yeah. recognize what I'm about to get myself into. And so what is like a, a good structure looks like. So yeah, he's being realistic about but, it. I mean, I can't stress this enough. If your workout improves the quality of your life, the odds that you'll continue to work out for the rest of your life are so much higher then if you don't understand that, you, if you don't understand that, you may get faster results in short periods of times or bursts or whatever, but it's so much less likely to keep it, ma- to maintain it for the rest of your life because 
if it takes away from the quality of your life, look, things are more important. Um, your family, your bought your job, your, you know, your sleep and eventually things start to break down. So mm -hmm. it's really all about if, if you're looking at long term, like I want to do this for the rest of my life. I want to stay fit and healthy forever. It's got to improve your life. Otherwise, it's going to be very hard to do that. Our next caller is Paul from Ontario. Paul, what's happening? How can we help you? Hi, guys. Um, first of all, I just wanted to thank you, like everybody does, um, for all the work that you do and everything that you've helped me accomplish. I'm sitting in my gym right now that uh, through the last five years of listening, uh, you guys have helped me get to a point where I was ready to do that. So thank you for everything that you do for me and my family and uh, everybody else out there. Awesome. Cool. Awesome. Uh, I've uh, got a strongman competition coming up. I'm 31. Um, I've decided instead of going to a lighter weight category that I would go up, um, instead of losing 20 pounds, gain 10, um, and re retain some of my strength in the process. Um, my thought though, is I was wondering if I should run power lift before running strong, um, to optimize kind of my movement goals with the, the weight. Um, I figured it would kind of bode well with a mini bulk um, that I'm going to be going through. Um, I've run through powerlift and it was, it was very specific. Um, I've only done my own kind of strongman training, um, working with the log and circus dumbbells and things like that. Um, but I wasn't sure what your take on that would be and, and um, how long I could run strong for if it was something that um, I could swap out some of the, the overhead presses or the presses for the Viking press that's going to be in the um, competition um, or what your insight was. Paul, is your, is your main goal to do well in strongman competitions? Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that for my first one, I would like to... I would like to um, at least be able to compete. Um, I look forward to participating, but I also understand that, you know, through the aches and pains that can come with that, I, I just ran through split and my body felt like the best it's ever felt in my life. Um, and so switching back, I thought this was a safe time to switch to strong as long as I'm running my mobility work and those sort of things appropriately. Okay, well, if your main goal is to compete in strongman, then you're gonna want to lift in 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 specific ways. Uh, strongman competitions, well, even powerlifting or any strength competition, skill plays a huge role in how well you're gonna compete or how much weight you can lift. So, powerlift, maps powerlift is very specific to powerlifting. You'll get good at the bench press, the deadlift, and the squat. Is there carryover to strongman in a little bit? Yeah, I mean there is, but strongman or map strong will have much more carryover. So I think Map Strong is going to be the ideal program. And then what I would do is in the work sessions in Map Strong, that's when I would modify and add movements that are more specific to your competition. So swap things out, add things, take things away, mm -hmm. and make it more specific to what you're doing. And then as far as that's concerned, um, I like uh, Maps Prime Pro and Maps Prime because mobility is a huge issue with a lot of the events that you do in, in Strongman. Your ability to move and twist and run with weight and all that stuff is going to be dependent on your stability and your mobility. So I think those two maps prime and prime pro will benefit any of your training and then use map strong as a base. And I would modify it, uh, depending on the, the type of competition you're going to do and what type of, uh, you know, uh, events they, they have. I'd also like to see map symmetry done after your competition. So I think uh, using Map Strong leading up to the competition. That's and and I 100% agree with what Sal's saying. I'd modify it if there's specific movements in there that you know are in the competition that you're not doing a lot of. I would I would sub them in uh, to the program, and then after you do uh, the competition, I think Map Symmetry would be great for your body uh, before you go back into either Strong yeah. or one of the other programs. Okay. So, Very cool. No problem. Do you have do you have uh, Maps Prime, Prime Pro, Strong? Do you have all that? No, I don't. I've got my Maps Prime. Um, I was actually going to purchase Maps Strong, and then I found out I was going to be on the episode, so I was like, I better double down. Um, so I, I was going to purchase that today. So, um, yeah, I don't have the, the Prime Pro or the, uh, yeah. you know, no. Well, don't get it until you get an email from us, because I'm going to mm. send you some free stuff, okay? Wow. Thank you so much. Yeah, cool. No problem. Yeah, but okay, I think that's it, though. I think that's the way you should go um, and then take it from there. I like Adam's advice, though, with symmetry. I think of all the programs we have, 
that's got the most carryover in terms of correctional strength. Yeah, especially since he's gonna he has done power lift. He's gonna go real heavy, get on strong. So he's doing a lot of bilateral stuff. I think some mm -hmm. unilateral work and isometric work would yeah. be would complement your your current training. Uh, obviously, I wouldn't do that now because right now we want to get as strong as we can specifically for yeah. the strongman competition. But then post, uh, that's what I would focus on. With the on. specifics, do you have access to a gym that has equipment like that, like Atlas Stones and you know some of the unconventional um, type of uh, you know exercises you can do in there? Yeah, I actually have uh, an Atlas Stone here. I've got a 400-pound road, oh, road yeah. bag right beside me. Uh, I got the log right behind me as well so i've got all the apparatus that i'll need for the competition hell yeah okay um, that, Pretty cool hell yeah all right man well you're all Great. set. yeah well then you're set up yeah because there's definitely sandbag work and all that circus pressing in in the program you're gonna love it man excellent thank you guys so much i appreciate everything right on, Thanks for calling cool. in, good luck man thank you so much take care <laughs> yeah that's you know the skill part of strength is so understated, I think, uh, or, or I should say under misunderstood by a lot of people. Yeah. I just read a study today where they had people doing quarter squats and full squats to look at where the strength gains would go. And of course, you do quarter squats, you're going to get most of your gains in the quarter squat. Right. You do full. <laughs> right and that's a, to that range of motion. And that's the same exercise, right? Basically, right? In the full squats, most of the gains will go in the, in the full range of motion yeah. with, you know, more carryover from the full squat than from the quarter squat because you're still quarter squatting in the full squat. But nonetheless, if you're doing a strength sport, you got it. You, you want to practice the the events themselves. Because I mean, it's just like so, anything else. Yeah. Like if you practice, you get better at. Like it has to be specifically focused at those movement. The movement itself, for like learning words of another language. So it's like it's it's it can be directly that specific. And to to be able to focus on that, if he wants to do well in his competition, it will always help to include those, you know, to, to be able to get the techniques and, and really, you know, work his way through that understanding with his body. What a great analogy, Justin. That's the best one. You've is that okay? No, that was phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's true. One, can, for, one for 75. Hey, that, was, that was so good. Ramp water, dude. <laughs> that was so good. Every now and then I'll get no, one. No, you know why? Because you can definitely like, you know, my dad speaks Italian fluently and he understands some Spanish because of the crossover, yeah. but he ain't going to speak Spanish as well as somebody who speaks Spanish. Yeah. Very, very good analogy. There we go. Our next caller is Charlene from Pennsylvania. Charlene, how can we help you? Hi, guys. Hi. Uh, thank you so much for having me here. Um, I'm going to keep geeking for a little bit because I can't believe I'm on here. Anyways, um, <laughs> so I was just going to say, yeah, thanks, guys, for having me. Um, just like everyone else, you guys do really such a good job with what you get, you know, with your channel. Um, so I like to watch you guys all the time. And I was also going to say, I think even though Justin's the quietest, he's the funniest. <laughs> well, yes. Well, that's not obvious. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. He's also yeah. the handsomest. Uh, anyway. the, the bestest. Thanks, no, Charlene. Yeah. yeah. Negative yeah. one point. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> there goes your free program. Go you're, ahead, You're my favorite now. So there we go. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. You get free cheese right, so, so my question is, okay, so I'll give you a quick overview just so you can understand where I'm coming from. So. Quick overview. So I went to college as an engineer. Um, I worked for like four and a half years after I graduated. So I did that during COVID. And then, um, well, I did that after co college, before COVID. And then during COVID, I started hating it. Like it was really bad. And the corporate thing was just like, it just wasn't working out for me. I was like, I can't do this anymore. Um, so I was working from home and I don't know, for some reason, it just got worse in terms of like workload and management. I just hated it. So I got into fitness since it was something that I was doing like in college and high school. I've always been an active person, but you know, of course, just like most people, you don't do it um, like uh, professionally. So you, you know, you have to go to school. So I quit my job um, a year and a half ago. So since then I got certified, started doing personal training. So I bounced around from gym to gym, couldn't find a good gym until I finally found one that I really like. So I've been working there since June. So right now at my job, uh, I'm starting to get more and more clients. So basically it's going pretty well. Um, and I got the idea from Adam in terms of like, you know, training as many people as you can, you know, not trying to like niche down already. Right. So the other day um, a member came in there and she, um, she looked like she had like spinal issues or some kind of issue. Right. Like, but she was looking for a trainer and she was like, um, she needed personal training, but she wanted to know what I specialize in. And I was like, uh, I don't really like, I, I mean, I guess I gave her my experience, but I didn't really have a direct answer for that. Um, and my coworkers was also saying that like, you know, he'd like to know eventually like what my specialty is so that eventually um, 
he, if he knows what I'm good at, he can recommend people to me when I'm not there. So I guess I just want to know, I want to be able to figure out how do you guys figure out how to niche down? Is it really important as your first, as you first start training? And if it is, how important is that? No, I don't think mm. it's that important. Uh, and I still would stick with my original advice, but I will give you more advice in regards. To, and if I would go, if I would go back and do it all over again, and I had to reorder all my certifications and which one I would have done first, I would have become a corrective exercise specialist first because of what you, the situation you just ran into right now. And that also applies to damn near every client you'll ever train. So there very rarely will I ever, it's got so much carryover. It does has so much carryover. And even if longevity with your clients and that's, and, and that type of client is one of the hardest clients to help. If you don't have that background, you don't know how to help her or teach her what to do, or you're concerned or you're fearful of like, Oh, what do I do with this person? Because they have this spinal condition. Like if you get that corrective exercise specialist background, that will not only take care of that client, but it will carry, carry over into everything. Athletes, high performance clients, your fat loss clients, your muscle. I mean, everybody will will benefit from that specialty or certification. And so I would highly recommend moving that direction, which would look like this, either NASM's version of corrective exercise specialist, uh, Ken Stretch, um, Eldoa, um, what other ones that I'm, I'm CPPBS le- has some of that in yeah. it too. Yeah, uh, look up Kelly Starrett's book. I, think uh, I added one too many P's. And, and uh, did you? Yeah, <laughs> CPPPBS. <laughs> uh, those are all I think good references for you as far as certifications and reads. Um, and then you could then when uh, a gym owner asks you, you can say I'm I'm a corrective exercise specialist. Although I train all clients. Um, and I work with everybody, but that's my specialty. Let me, let me add to that. So I, I, I'm going to back that up 100%. Somebody, a trainer that really understands correctional exercise can bring value to almost any client. In fact, yeah. I can't think of a client that wouldn't benefit from, from that. Now, the second part, uh, which might be a little different, is when your manager, because I know what your manager is doing. Your manager is trying to pair you with the best clients for you. Okay, So as a manager, you're always trying to find you're trying to match personalities, match goals, match schedules so that the client that comes in works with the best trainer and they have a good bond and it works out well. So the question that they're really asking you is not necessarily what are your specialties, but rather what kind of clients do you like to train? Yeah. So that's the way I would answer that. So when your manager asks you, what are your specialties? Say, well, I really like to train and then name the people that you like to train. I like to train busy moms. I like to train executives. I like to train people who are trying to build lots of strength. I really like working with people for fat loss. I like working with people in advanced age. Like whatever you enjoy working with, just tell your manager and let them know. It can even be it can even be personalities. Like, you know, I really like working with people who are shy to come work to work in the gym. Or I like people who are beginners. Like I used to match my trainers to clients who, you know, of course there were there were the specialties that oftentimes I would need to connect, but really it was usually about personalities. Yeah. When I'd meet a, a when I had a potential client and I saw that they were shy or you know I knew that there was a trainer that I had that worked well with them or someone was loud and boisterous, I knew that I had another trainer that worked with them. So yeah. all these things that are, are, are things you want to consider. To that point too, um, I remember back when like Adam would give me all these like really really difficult personality people intentionally <laughs> because I he knew though that I could handle that in terms of like if you can win somebody over that has a whole lot of reserves from the very beginning um those tended to be my best clients the lifer clients and so if you can work through that um between that and then the previous advice which I think was really good in terms of like focusing on um pain and and being able to alleviate that through corrective exercise through mobility I think will set you so much further up in the future because it does translate to everything and right. I think that uh, that that message doesn't get out enough to to personal trainers to really um put that tool in in their toolbox uh first and foremost because um you know weight loss and you know all these like the normal things that bring people into the gym uh your real value is to be able to solve pain and and certain dysfunction that they have to to then benefit their life and their pursuits elsewhere uh and and so i think that that's probably you know nothing builds value like that charlie specialty charlie what uh what programs of ours do you own already i got performance and anabolics for myself (laughs) Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna have I'm gonna have Doug send you Maps Prime because I think that's a that's a must have for you, and then we'll yeah. we'll send over some other things to look into. But though that that's a, an incredible starting point. Every for trainer you, should and, have and, that. and every trainer should absolutely have yeah. Maps Prime. So we're gonna send that over to you, and then look into the courses that I was talking about 
And I think I think uh, I think you'll do great, Charlene. One one more question for you. So you you went to school to be an engineer. So you had a degree in engineering, and then you quit your engineering job to be a personal trainer. How did your parents yeah. feel about that? Well, I'm African, so you can imagine what they said. They like, <laughs> that was a tough conversation. Don't yeah, tell them it was us, right? Yeah, no, it wasn't good. My dad almost like I think they were almost in denial. They were like shocked. And they're still kind of getting over it. I mean, they, they're still my parents. They love me, but it, it wasn't good. <laughs> I, I, they were in the same state as me, so I knew I wasn't going to get a whooping. I was like, Whoop. <laughs> <laughs> I, I imagine the discipline it took, though, to finish your degree yeah. and the thing. and you, you'll, you sh- you'll crush it. Yeah, you strike me as somebody. How you do anything is how you do everything. So I imagine that you will apply the same tenacity towards this career and then certainly be able to show them uh, your success there. And I think the questions you're asking are I, fair. And I really point. think you go, yeah. go the correctional exercise route, Charlene. I could see that so much value. There's so much you can learn there and apply, and it really will make you extremely valuable in the marketplace. Yep. The most valuable trainers in the marketplace in terms of dollars, in terms of how much they could charge the businesses that they could build are specialists in correctional, correctional exercise. And along those lines, since we're, since, uh, we're going to continue to push and motivate you in this direction now that we know your story a little more, uh, I would start building relationships uh, with chiros and doctors right now because if you, get, if you start to get really good at the corrective exercise specialist, you're the perfect bridge mm-hmm. for those patients. Oh, they'll send you all and the continuing referrals. Continuing their rehab. And, I got and so many referrals else. that yeah. way. I mean, that was really the inspiration of MAPS Prime and Prime Pro for us was to bridge the gap between physical therapy and chiropractors and the gym because they get all these people that are broken down and hurt and can't move well. They they get them moving better, and then it becomes, okay, well, what does that look like? Do you throw them right into a strength-building program? Well, there should be a nice bridge to help that person move better inside the gym. That was Prime and Prime Pro when we created that, and so I think you going out, building relationships with physical therapists, chiropractors, doctors, uh, start building that network now while you're going through the education process of corrective exercise specialists and become that resource for them. That could, that could drive your business by itself. Yeah. So thanks for Thank calling. You. Thanks for calling in Charlotte. Yeah. yeah thanks. I'm a, honestly, I was going to say like literally all my clients are literally corrective. And I think that's, you guys just literally just spoke what I was you know thinking. So yeah. Oh, thanks. Perfect. Oh, awesome. Perfect. Awesome. 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 Charlene. Thanks Charlene. Guys, good, have a good, one. good luck. Have a good one. You got it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I like her. She's gonna do all right. She's gonna do yeah. well. I think she's gonna do well. I mean, she's Kenji, my favorite so far. I know yeah. when I when I heard that though from because <laughs> she's young, right? She went from engineering to personal trailer. Like, oh my god! And, uh, what did your parents? Oh, the shock! Did you parents. imagine being a dad? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I just spent how much you said you're <laughs> in college. <laughs> you want to be a trainer? It hurts a little <laughs> now as a dad. <laughs> I, I kind of see it from that side. I mean, oh, look, you do. I mean, look, you, you could do. do you could do very well in our space. It's just hard. It's yeah. Just hard yeah, but do. again, the, how you do anything is how you do anything, yes. right? So, I'm, if you got an engineering degree, and I know what kind of job that is to do that, you you apply that mind set and discipline over in the training and you i think she'll separate but I, I think your point was just perfect the, the most value i saw in the marketplace of fitness was through being able to get people oh, if, to feel yeah, better if i could go back always. if i could go back and do it all over again i would like fat loss doesn't even come close everybody close. thinks it's about fat no. loss everybody no. thinks about no, no no if you're a trainer and you can make people move and feel better and not feel pain anymore you are invaluable it yeah. was like a, over six years i can't remember when i got my ces but it was a long time it was i so a good chunk of my career, I didn't have that. And then when I got that, it was like this whole thing opened up for me. Like, oh my God, like mm-hmm. I was missing this piece yep. to my training. It it applies to every client. And and you being able to do that, you help somebody at the the most basic level to the highest level, you know, of experience. Like you totally how many how many experienced lifters were you able to help correct something because and blow their mind. Yeah, blow their mind. They've been lifting for 20 years, but they've got this issue that bothers them like crazy and they can't put their finger on it. They their body looks good because they understand nutrition and exercise is important, but they don't know about how the body moves like that and how to correct it. Oh my God, that's a huge, huge one. Our next caller is Doug from California. Doug, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey guys, uh, thank you for taking my call. I really do appreciate it. Uh, to start off with the obligatory thanks. Uh, I've been listening to Mind Pump for a little over a year and it has definitely changed uh, my YouTube subscriber attendance as well as my life. Uh, so yeah, man, I, I really do appreciate the time. I'll just, uh, I'll kick it off. So my story kind of starts, or at least my question, about a year ago, I had gotten... I gotten COVID and then through COVID, I developed a pretty bad lung infection, which led to pneumonia and then uh, a heart inflammation. So I was uh, 
I was out of work. I do commercial construction, but I was bedridden for about three months. Uh, before that, I was relatively relatively lean. I weighed about 235, but during that period, I six foot three, by the way. During that time, I gained about 30 pounds, and my metabolism just went down. I don't know exactly what had caused that. But it, it just started getting really bad. But around that time, I started listening to you guys. And uh, I wanted to take advantage of, I mean, at that point, I was 265. I was eating about just that maintenance, maybe 2,400 calories a day, which was like rough. Um, so I wanted to start gaining some muscle. I, I listened to a lot of what you guys were saying about how reverse dieting would be beneficial at that point, uh, trying to build some muscle to help my body, like build its metabolism up. And I, I got some of, uh, I got maps power lift. I got maps performance and maps strong. And man, that was super, super helpful. So over, over about a year of programming, I stayed in power lift for about six months, but I, Dude, it was, I mean, absolutely life-changing, guys. I, I can't tell you enough. Like, I seriously questioned every single workout and every single phase. I had never done full body workouts. Very, like, I was very much like, why are they having me do these percentages? It doesn't make sense. Like, I feel strong when I leave. Like, I feel like I have more to give. And, dude, I saw just tremendous. So, I stayed just to give you like the nuts and bolts of it, I stayed at 265 and went from 30% body fat to about 20 wow. in about a year. Wow. And nice. Yeah. My macros went from, or my, my calories went from 2,400 to about 4,500 at my like peaking. And, uh, man, it was props to you guys. I, I don't question the programs anymore. But it was definitely counterintuitive uh, until I started seeing those results. It's super, super beneficial. But anyways, uh, I developed, I started cutting down weight. And this is all, this all kind of happened in around August. Uh, I decided, hey, I, I, I built a good amount of muscle. I feel strong. I feel active. I feel healthy. I think I want to start bringing the calories down. And then I injured my knee. Uh, I'm waiting on an MRI. My doctor thinks it's either a popped IT band or a torn meniscus. Um, but this is kind of what started happening, man. Like I, my body started talking to me and I just started getting super, super tired. And I figured it was just something like no big deal. Maybe I just been training for too long. Maybe I need to take a little bit of a rest. And then all of a sudden I just started feeling like super, super irritable, really, really grouchy energy levels started going super low down. And, uh, man, I, I didn't know what was wrong at first. I thought like, maybe, maybe I'm just like being crabby and I need to get over it. And then like my libido just absolutely disappeared, which is very strange for me. And so like, it really boiled down. Like I went and got some blood work, uh, and this all kind of happened one day. I came home from work and, you know, my daughters, they're asking me, dad, can we go to the park? I got two girls, six and four. And I'm just like, man, like it was heartbreaking for me to just tell my girls, like, I just don't have any energy. Like I can't even go outside and play with kids. I just felt so sluggish and low. Like I went from benching 315 pounds to like feeling like my muscles are getting sore after doing like 10 pushups. Uh, so I went and I got some blood work done and it turns out I had like really low testosterone, which I thought was strange. And then my, my cholesterol was super, super, I guess for my age, really high is what I was told. My LDL cholesterol I'm looking at right now is 227, but then my HDL cholesterol is below at about 15 and, uh, so I, I just kind of ceased, like every time I would try to exercise, like, dude, it just hurts so bad. I feel like I have like no energy and I was just wondering like what you guys would recommend moving forward. Yeah, 100%. I want you to go uh, and, and work with functional medicine practitioners over at MP yeah. Holistic Health. Is that the name of our forum, Doug? Is it MP Holistic, Holistic Health? Health? Yes. Oh, so on Facebook, we have a free forum. And it's run okay. by uh, Dr. Cabral's team, 
of specialists. They're all functional medicine practitioners or assistants. And you need to work with a functional medicine practitioner. There's something yeah. at the root here that's causing all those things to go from where you were to suddenly having this low testosterone, this really high cholesterol number. Hmm. Um, you know, I'm not even going to try to speculate. I mean, I right. could throw a bunch of stuff out yeah. there. Well, you can tell them this, that, th that those feelings are probably directly connected to what you just found out of through course. your blood work. But so. something's causing that. Right. And so with the, with the functional medicine practitioners, they can, they can have you do a bunch of different labs. Uh, to try yeah. to identify what's going on and then use a holistic approach to try and get things to change, either through treating, you know, gut dysbiosis, working with uh, herbs and lifestyle to get your body to work with itself to get back on track. That's that's the place I'm going to send you. By the way, this is and this you're a, you're a clear example of how we would recommend most people would try and figure this out first before you do TRT. So TRT may be something that you explore in the future, but absolutely go this route first to get to the bottom of it of why this potentially happened right now and see if we can get to the root cause of it. But the you the recommendation may be to go HRT route in the future. We'll see. But yeah, I'd go MP Holistic Health, go on that forum, and then see if you can make an appointment with one of them and uh, to, to you know get some recommendations for labs and stuff. And then okay. take it from there. Because it sounds like there's something underlying there's something under there's a root issue here. Maybe not just yeah. one thing, but a few different things. Because from where you went, from where you were to where, where all of a sudden it's a dramatic went, shift. Yeah. yeah. So I don't think it. Yeah, you're gonna feel bad from low testosterone, but something's causing your testosterone to get low. Right. And and if you're yeah, that's what I thought too. Because they had said like I'd done like a bit of research, but I'm not really like a research junkie. And it was like maybe from getting an injury and getting more internal inflammation that can like affect testosterone. I don't really know, but I was just, yeah, it, it happened super. I mean, this all started in August and I got that blood work done three weeks ago. And by that point, this is for the birds. Like I do not feel like this anymore. Like, I couldn't, I couldn't even explain how different of a life Doug, it feels like. Doug, listen, it could be, you could have high levels of a toxic metal in mm -hmm. your system, which could cause these symptoms. You could have some nutrient deficiencies that could cause this. You could have a, a underlying infection in your gut. Multiple stress factors. Yeah, and so yeah, so there's there's like certain things can happen that that can trigger all the things that you're talking about, but you have to figure out what it is first. And so yeah. working with somebody who's a, who's a functional medicine practitioner, that's what they do. They look and try to find the underlying cause. So I mean, I'm not even going to sit here and try because. I would need to see labs. I would need to do all that. And I'm not even an expert. I want you that. to keep us in the loop, though. I really do want, I want you to get connected with Cabral and their team. S spend the time, spend the money. It'll be, all of it will be worth it for you to get to the bottom of this and help you, help you out. And then stay in touch with us. So then when we start to hear what Cabral is telling you, we can help guide you potentially on the fitness side on what things we would do as far as strength training and stuff like look, that. If he says to compliment And that. look, I, not, not to give you false hope, or like I said, I don't know what's going on, but I've had people were with you know similar situations where they they'll come to me and be like man it was weird it was like all of a sudden and i noticed this and i was so much better before and i'm like well what changed nothing really i don't know what's going on and it was like SIBO that they could treat or it was toxic metal uh mm -hmm. you know build up that they didn't even Some weren't even aware of yeah, yeah so and yeah. it was like oh my god once i got, once i fixed that or parasite like once i fixed that like my health came back so i'm um, not saying it could it's a silver bullet uh there's there's probably uh. a few things but something, there's something at the root here. It doesn't sound like you just, oh, you know, you know, you know, I just, my body, I'm getting older or whatever. Especially from what you happened. came from, bro. You were just, you were crushing it, it sounds like. So, absolutely. Yeah, and I, it's trippy because I'm 29, so I'm like, yeah. this doesn't feel like very, or like none of my peers, like people even at my work, like this doesn't seem like very common practice. You know, like this was not like an easy transition So. Yeah, I appreciate the advice. No problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So go there, yeah. ask, see if you could set up an appointment, work with one of them, and, and they'll be able to figure it and out. Keep us in the loop. I really want to find out how, how everything goes, Doug. Yeah, thanks, Doug. Yeah. I appreciate it. Well, okay, I ask one more thing. Just sure. as far as, as far as eating goes, because I don't really know much about, like, cholesterol reduction or anything like that like is there like a dietary recommendation that you guys yeah. Cabral's have? gonna do all that though yeah I'll, I'll, I can give you I can uh, give you general okay, advice yeah listen I can give you general advice however a spike in cholesterol could be due to something underlying um that could be causing that or maybe you didn't know that you had high cholesterol this whole time I'm not sure but generally speaking 
uh, eating in a calorie deficit not and having a low saturated fat intake generally does lower total cholesterol and help with LDL with people who are susceptible to having high cholesterol. That's general though. So I think when you work with the team over there though, because they'll be doing all the labs with you, that's definitely something they're, they're going to address. Yeah. He's yeah. going to talk to you specifically what to do. Oh, okay. I appreciate it. Yep. No problem, man. Thanks for calling in. Yeah, man. Thank you. You got it. <clears throat> Boy, that's, that's tough. Yeah. That's yeah. uh really strange to go and 29 years old. I mean, to be crushing the weight, yep. seeing great results like he was, and I mean, every all the symptoms is like definitely the the, the symptoms of low testosterone, right? So yeah, he sounds like yeah, everything. But what took it from where I know it was uh, to there? It, it no. does kind of sound, and I've heard similar stories like this, but they were usually around like a parasite that they got traveling yeah. somewhere or something like crazy like that. But yeah, it's to speculate is just you know. I love that he called in, and the 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 listener can't see this, but you know he did ask. That's why, by the way, I brought up the TRT thing because that was one of his questions. Was like, should I go this route? But this is a, a classic example of why you wouldn't want to do that in this situation because that might mask what's really going on inside. Because yeah. yeah. I guarantee, if you give somebody that's that low testosterone a shot of testosterone yeah, right away, better, you're but... going to feel better. You're going to feel better than what you were, but then you didn't address how how you got no, there. No, and you might not get back to where you were before because there's right. still an underlying issue there. So you might be like, well, I feel a little better. Something but... big to uncover here. Exactly. Right? Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. And you can find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. This one's really important, and that is to phase your training. If somebody trains for a full year doing a bench press, and they're always aiming for five reps, if you compared that person to a person who did bench press where they did three or four weeks of five reps, but then they did three or four weeks of 12 reps, and then three or four weeks of, let's say, 15 to 20 reps, and then they'll throw in some supersets. At the end of that year, you're going to see more consistent progress from the person who's moving in and out. And less injury. That's another thing. You'll see less injury as well.